Hey everyone, Azim here. Uh, we are in chapter 23. Uh, this is a second set of notes. We previously gone over chapter 23, blood vessels histology. Here we're going over chapter 23, blood vessel circulation. And this has several parts. Um, we'll be going over pulmonary circulation first. Can't see that. Go over pulmonary circulation in this first video. Um, then we'll be going over different parts of systemic circulation. We'll be going over coronary, digestive, hepatic, brain, arms, and legs. Uh, all of these are part of the systemic circulation. All systemic means is somewhere else in the body that isn't the lungs. So we've already gone over the major anatomy of the histology of blood vessels uh, and structures, uh, both both looking at it, the tissue under the microscope and we'll have, we have those videos of the models if you take a look at the YouTube page. Here we're going over the major arteries, what capillaries they lead to, to whatever organ, veins that come back to the heart and how we circulate blood. So it'll be really important to be able to trace a given pathway. If you want to deliver blood to the brain, to deliver blood to the hand, to deliver blood to the liver, there's specific ways or even alternate ways that you can get there. And it'll be, of course, important to identify these things on a cadaver. So I've mentioned how there's always one, at least one way to get from point A to point B. If you're driving somewhere, let's say you start here, the quickest way would be where I'm drawing my pink line. That would be the quickest way if we're trying to end at our destination. But let's say, in we're driving, this pathway is under construction. So we can't go that way anymore. We have to find another way. By going another way, we can still get to the same place. We just have to take a detour. Detours often are a little longer, but at least we're gonna get to the place where we need to get. This is true with driving directions. This is also true with blood circulation. We often have detour routes the term we use is collateral circulation. Collateral because it's an extra thing. Um, we have collateral circulation, detour routes to get to the same place. And so I'll be pointing out different detour routes, different collateral circulations to get from point A to point B in more than one way. This is really important, not just to deliver as much blood as possible to a given organ, but also to have uh, an alternate route in case one area gets blocked off for some reason, whether it's a blood clot or something else. So we're not gonna go over this activity right now, but I wanna introduce this to you right now to assess your baseline of understanding of the circulatory system. When we went over circulatory pathways earlier, we just briefly went over here's pulmonary, here's systemic. Do you, can you trace the path of blood flow starting from the heart, deliver it to the right toe and back at the heart. I have this very you know, simplified drawing of a person here. You're welcome to use this or make a simple ginger person drawing of your own. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go over, the, over this at the end of uh, this, set, this series of, uh, of notes. Let's first talk about the pulmonary circulation, the most basic one, <laughs> most straightforward one, I should say, the most straightforward one of the ones we'll be talking about. It's just going to get more and more complicated. Not to say you won't get it, but it will take more time to understand. Pulmonary circulation, the whole purpose is to reoxygenate blood. Uh, you'll notice that I have two versions, one, a simplified version over here, and then something a little more anatomically correct, both illustrations. We want to reoxygenate blood. That's the goal. But for the pulmonary circulation starts on the right side of the heart. The pulmonary circulation starts on the right side of the heart. We start at the right atrium. That's step one. We pump blood to the right ventricle. That's step two. At this point, and how did we get blood here in the first place? We've collected deoxygenated blood from the veins, from the superior vena cava, from the inferior vena cava, uh, from the coronary sinus. 
So we have deoxygenated blood. From the right ventricle, we pump blood out to the heart, the pulmonary trunk, then to right and left pulmonary arteries. Those arteries branch more and more to arterioles, arterioles branch to capillaries. So here we are in the lungs, pulmonary capillaries. That's where we have gas exchange. Oxygen is coming in. Let me use a different color. Oxygen is coming in and carbon dioxide is leaving. It's what we breathe out. So now we have oxygenated blood at this point. Oxygenated blood comes back to, towards the heart through the pulmonary uh, veins. So pulmonary veins, they're veins because they're coming back to the heart and they're carrying oxygenated blood because they just came from the lungs. And then we return back to the left side of the heart. Here we are at the left atrium. That's the pulmonary circuit in a nutshell. We've skimmed over some of the smaller blood vessels. I'm not gonna expect you to know the names of all those little arteries and arterioles. They don't all have names, you know, they're just arterioles, but um, this is the basic pathway, how, how we get deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs, bring oxygenated blood to the left side of the heart so that the left side of the heart can pump blood to the rest of the body that has oxygen. Here's some uh, cadaver pictures that I've labeled for you. It so might be a little confusing where we, where we are here since this is not showing the whole body, but let's take a look at this picture first on the left. <clears throat> Imagine that the front of the body, the chest has been removed, thoracic cage, anterior portion has been removed. So there's no sternum, no ribs. Well, you can see the back side of the ribs on the left. You can see the back side of the ribs on the, on the right. So part of the thoracic cage, the posterior side is there. Lungs are removed, lungs are gone. So now we see the heart right here. There's a heart. What I'm tracing right now in green, that's a pulmonary trunk. What I'll trace in red is the aorta. Um, let me show the pulmonary trunk again. Let's do that in blue. Here's the pulmonary trunk. And then the pulmonary trunk branches. I'll do this in green. Here's the left pulmonary artery and then hiding behind the aorta is the right pulmonary artery. That's delivering blood towards lungs, which again, the lungs have been removed here. On the right side, the heart has been removed so that we can better see all the other connections. So the heart should be right here, that's gone. We can see those pulmonary arteries. Here is the left side, here's the right side, anterior view of heart removed. Um, you can see two pulmonary veins on either side. There's right pulmonary veins and there's left pulmonary veins. You can also see the aorta that's been cut right here. It should be coming down to the heart once again, but that's gone. The last thing I wanna show you in this video is uh, we'll switch to complete anatomy. I wanna remind you that all of these com complete anatomy screens, and as well as these Ackland's videos where I got these screenshots, you can find them on the Canvas page. Um, scroll down, we're here in the videos of the cardiovascular system. Scroll down, down, down. Here's complete anatomy. Um, and here are all these different screens related to the cardiovascular system. I'm going to click on whole body circulation. When you click on that, what comes up, is this. At the top, it says view screen mode, um, full body blood vessels, because that's what the name of the screen is. And so we have right now, we can see um, the body. Um, I'm actually gonna remove that beating heart. Oh, first, sorry. First, I'm gonna hit the X, not the very, very top right X, but the one right below that, because I wanna get out of screen mode, keep current model position, choose the screen. 
So now I can click on things. I'm gonna go to settings and remove this beating heart. Preferences. Okay. Okay, so here we can see a whole body. It's just showing the blood vessels that I'm asking you to know in this class. This is not all the blood vessels. I can show all the hidden arteries, for instance, and there's a lot. We're, we're not gonna do that. There's, there's way too many. Um, and just so you have an idea, I'm gonna add in the bones, the skeleton, so you can see that these blood vessels correspond to a full human being. We zoom in here. You can see our heart from an anterior view. We start here in the right atrium, then we pump blood to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, out the pulmonary trunk, and then out the pulmonary arteries. Not shown here would be, you know, the pulmonary capillaries. So I'll label that. One is right atrium, two is right ventricle, three is pulmonary trunk, four the pulmonary arteries on either side. Five is pulmonary capillaries. That's delivering blood to the lungs. So we're only halfway done with our circuit. Clearing this and we're gonna spin around to better see the return of oxygenated blood to the heart. So here's a posterior view. Uh, posterior, a bit left lateral view. So we've gone from, what was it? I believe it was five. That was pulmonary capillaries. Um, if that wasn't the number, then just move the number up. But then we return blood through the pulmonary veins. There's two on either side. And from the pulmonary veins, we return blood to this. It's hiding behind this aorta. I can, I can remove this part of the aorta that's obstructing our view. There we go. Okay, so you can see the, whoops, you can see the left atrium right here. So we're sending blood to the left atrium. We now have an oxygenated blood back at the heart. All right, that is pulmonary circulation. In the next video, we'll go over the other systemic circulation, starting with coronary. So I'll see you in the next video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.